Blessings and welcome to your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer and Reverend Dexo Peltzer. Amen. And today we are going to continue with our discipleship series. And today we're going to be talking about the gifts of the Spirit. So we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting with verse 1 to halfway the chapter. And we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, the captain of the ship. He is the one that empowers us to walk in the gifts of the Spirit with the different manifestations. But he is, is the different diversity of gifts that operate differently, but it's the same Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit is the one that distributes them according to his will. Amen. So before we start, I'm going to ask Brother Dexter to please pray. Amen. And Amen. start the teaching. Amen. Shalom, Lord. We just come to you. We, we want to honor you, Lord, and your gifts that you give us, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we want to be a blessing and not only understand that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, but our lives to be led by the Holy Spirit for us to have effective ministry. And without you, Holy Spirit, we just confess it's impossible. So, Lord, open up our eyes to see this truth, our ears to hear it, and our hearts to receive it. Write these truths onto us and help us to have a hunger and a zeal to pursue these truths being manifest in us until it is true, Father. Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, so um, the gifts of the Spirit are really critical in the body of Christ for us to build up each other. And as we're going to also see, they're also critical to accompany the gospel. For the gospel is only to be spoken with it, being accompanied by the miracle signs and wonders, the gifts of the Spirit. And that's what makes the gospel effective many times for people to receive it. Because remember, the gospel of, of God is the power of God unto salvation. And as we're going to see, there's a promise in the word that as we proclaim the gospel, the Lord will release the gifts. So this is really important that we understand this. We're not to proclaim the gospel, as Paul says, with our words of our own wisdom, but they're to be proclaimed by the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see this in the Word of God today. So I hope that puts a hunger in you to know what the gifts are and to make sure that you understand the Holy Spirit can bring these gifts operating through you for any situation of ministry you will ever need. You don't even have to worry about which gifts he's going to flow through you because he's the captain of the ship and he'll lead you to release those gifts and the anointing related to them and the power. Your job is to simply be bold and go out when he calls you to start ministering to someone and then the Holy Spirit takes over. That's what's beautiful about this. So this is not something to put pressure on you, but it's something to know. So as the Holy Spirit is releasing things, you'll know, oh, this is of God and you'll feel the power being released, okay? Let's start out with 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. You know, um, last time we talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, of course, this is essential to start out with, that you're filled with the Holy Spirit or baptized with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is actually inside of you and in charge of your ministry now. And Paul teaches the gifts of the Spirit because he knows these are critical within the church functioning and even outside of the doors of the church, as we said, to proclaim the gospel. So he says in verse 1, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, so he's talking to the church here, not to unbelievers, I do not want you to be ignorant. Okay, now let's turn to verse 4, where he's going to start to explain the functioning of the Holy Spirit and our calling and our gifts in our ministry. And he says in verse 4, there are diversities of gifts. That means there's just not one, but there's many, but the same Spirit. So immediately he's saying, listen, there are going to be many gifts I'm going to talk about. We're going to, have to talk about nine of them in the next few verses. But within those nine gifts, there's only one Spirit, my Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the one that you're baptized with that fills you that actually will flow these living waters through you. That's why Jesus said, when you believe, rivers of living water will flow through you. And the point is, they flow out of you, as the word says, to touch others. Okay? So the gifts are meant to bless others. Yes? And you know, the Holy Spirit has just told me to tell people that if you're fully surrendered to God, yeah. 
you can flow in the nine gifts. Yeah, and Marisol, we were doing a ministry class the other day of um, ministering in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord was very emphatic to us, the Spirit was, that we're not to just think we have one gift, like I'm a healer or I'm a miracle worker. No. We need to understand by the time we finish this chapter that all nine gifts will flow through you as needed in any ministry situation that you are in. All of them are meant to flow through you. And it is the Holy Spirit will decide which ones are needed to minister to that particular ministry need of that person. And I'm talking about they flow even when you're on the phone praying with them, it doesn't matter. You're gonna find it's remarkable how these flow. Today, they can flow anyway, because the Spirit can be anywhere at once. That's the beauty of it. The Holy Spirit has no limitations. For example, you can pray for somebody to be healed, and they could be in China, and you can be here, and they could be healed. They can be healed. Hallelujah. Yes. And that has happened many times. So, this is beautiful that God gives us this amazing grace of these gifts to love each other. Let's never forget that. This is an incredible way for us to love each other in the body of Christ and to love people into the kingdom of God. So, again, verse 4, there are diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. Verse 5, it's important we know there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. So now he, he does a little shift. He starts out by saying gifts, and now he's shifting to your calling or your ministry. Now, this is a little bit different, yes. Here is referring, if you have a, a prophetic calling, uh, if you walk in the office of the prophet, prophet, and so, or if you are an apostle, an evangelist, or a teacher, or if you're somebody who works, walks in the gift of mercy, okay? So let's see this in operation. We're going to stop for a moment before we get in depth in the gifts with our callings that come directly from the Lord. Let's see how that works in Ephesians 4, verse 11. This is really important you understand this. Your calling comes directly from the Lord. My calling came directly from the Lord, my office I am in. Her calling as a prophet, even when she tried to change it, the Lord made sure she, it was clear by, in a dream, giving her a necklace that said prophetess. Because she wanted to become a pastor. And the Lord said, no, 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 that's not your calling. So let me read this to you. It's really beautiful how this functions. This is, remember, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So we can pursue what our calling is, and then we can receive that directly from the Lord, as we did. And he himself, being Jesus Christ, gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. This is loving each other through ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying to what? Well, here it is. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, we become mature. Or, and listen to this. To a perfect man, woe, I always, when we read that, people are like, well, you can't be perfect. Well, yes, you're called to be perfect, and we're called to be ministering each other into that perfection or maturity in Christ. To the full measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Wow, we're to be just like Jesus. That's why the word says we're to even do greater works than he did. We're his ambassadors, so we have to reflect who he, who he was, is, We're his, ambassador. his character, yes. his attributes. Yes, his holiness yeah. and his power. Make no mistake, the ministry of Jesus Christ, the word says if there were books written at that time on the earth, they could not contain all the deeds he done. He did the miracle, signs, wonders, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, it doesn't matter. All that was done. His obedience. Dexter. All the people that were healed. You've you got, you got to go to the scriptures. There's whole villages. Everyone in the word says was healed. I really like this. I mean, it's like amazing. We're to be like that. And we're to build up each other into that. And then God gives these offices, the fivefold ministry, 
that all churches, I believe, should have within their church to function. And ours does. And I, the ones I, I know of do. And I, we're meant to walk in all these ministers as well as others we're going to see in a moment. Yes, Marisol. You know, it says that so that we're not fluctuating children, so that we yeah. are standing firm. Yeah, we're not deceived by false teachers, false prophets, false apostles. They're all listed in the Word of God. They won't deceive us. Why? Because we're mature and we know the Word of God and we test all things by the Word of God. And we watch over each other for the truth. Boy, I do that all the time. It's one of my principal things because I, I carry a sword of truth and sword of no compromise, which means I, obedience to the Word. But it, it's so important. I, a long time ago, I made a commitment to the Lord to only walk in truth. And that means I would only receive truth. And by the way, that means one of the nine gifts is discerning of spirits or discerning of true versus false spirits. And that is something that I carry as a result of that. I can tell pretty much instantly when someone is prophesying or teaching falsely. The spirit just wells up inside of me and just says, no, that's false, and then tells me why. And I can see him. Immediately, he takes out his phone and starts looking in his in it for Bible verses. <laughs> so for the building up, really important. Okay, so we're to have, and the, the Bible says your gifts and your calling in Romans are irrevocable. That means, in the spirit of time, you have a calling to fulfill on this earth all the days of your life, a ministry calling, and you have gifts that will be ministered through you to fulfill that calling. Amen. And the word says everyone has gifts, just in case you're not sure. There's another scripture that says everyone has them. Everyone who gives their life to the Lord and is filled by the Spirit has them. All right. And it says for us to desire the gifts. Yeah. Earnestly desire the gifts and earnestly Pursue and desire the greater gifts. Wow. So this is not something we're to be not zealous about. It is good to pursue the Lord until you start seeing the manifestation of their gifts through you. Okay? This is not something you're not to do. This is pleasing to the Lord. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's go back again. <clears throat> now. We talked about difference of ministries, but I'm sorry, I guess I, I just want to, because this is really important, because some of you, no, let's stick with the, the ministry, our calling. Okay. Let's go to Romans 12:6, because the Lord just told me, he wants you to know that not everyone is called even into the fivefold ministry. So I want you to listen to this carefully. In Romans 12, verse 6, um, well, first of all, in verse 5, it says, we're members of the body of Christ, we're the church, members of the body, individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. So, we're not all going to be prophets. And we're all not just going to run around prophesying to each other, which is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. That would get awfully dull after a while. Marisol, let me prophesy over you. Okay. And then Marisol goes, no, let me prophesy over you. And I'm like, well, no, now it's my turn. Let me prophesy. It would It's kind like of, a church where everybody's the pastors. It's, it's, it wouldn't has function. No, it's no Who's going to cook the meals? Who's going to usher? Who's going to greet the people at the door? Who's going to collect the offering? Is it pastors? We're all pastors. It doesn't work. All right. So yeah. then having then diffs gifts differing according to the grace that is given us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. <laughs> or ministry, let it use it in our ministering. That's like everything. That, that's a catch-all for all of us. We're always to minister. That means sometimes we're to pray for each other. That's ministering, by the way. He who teaches in teaching. Well, we just heard. Teachers are one of the fivefold ministries. Prophecy is one of the fivefold ministries. He who exhorts in exhortation. I consider a lot of times that's pastors or evangelists. Boy, 
you listen to Billy Graham, and you listen to some of these evangelists, and then you listen to some of these pastors, oh my goodness, can they exhort us when they do a sermon? You're um, all called to evangelize. With liberality. He who leads with diligence, we need leaders, right? We need elders who are the head of the elders of the church. We need then governance in the church. We need order, because the word says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that our God is a God of order, not of chaos. So he wants order, even in how a church functions. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It talks about even order when you prophesy, what order you do and how you do it, when you speak in tongues and when you don't. There is order in even how these gifts are administered. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14. All right. And he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So listed on this, so you don't miss it, is there are kingdom givers. The Lord blesses them, blesses their business. Many of them are entrepreneurs, and they're actually the ones the Lord uses as cheerful givers to give into the kingdom. And many times, extraordinary gifts for the needs of the body to perform what Christ has called it to perform. You all know what I'm talking about. How many times in your life, huh, you know what I'm talking about, Pastor, it says an offering come in or a gift come in, even at this ministry across TV, that it's exactly when you needed it. In fact, Joseph, who leads this ministry across TV, just told us testimonies of people who gave exactly when they needed it to pay their critical and essential bills. That's part of how this ministry continues, is that if we're faithful as givers, then guess what? The ministry faithfully carries on, and God is always on time, by the way. You know what I'm talking about. If he calls you to do a ministry, he's always on time with the needs of that ministry being provided to you. All right, so we don't all have the same callings, folks. That's all good. It's awesome, but we all need each other. One person's the eyes, another's the ears, another's the mouth, another's the hands. Again, that's all 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. It talks about how we're all essential members and how we need each other. And God gives all, brings all those gifts together beautifully to edify the entire body with what it needs. There is nothing lacking Believe me, he brings in every calling, every gift, and has it function. Because remember, the Holy Spirit can function any gift at any time through anyone in the church. We'll see that more as we go through this. All right. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 now. All right. So I'm trying not to get us lost in the weeds. So we understand the big picture, and then we understand the gifts functioning in that big picture and our calling. All right, so verse 6, there are diversities of workings, but it is the same God who works all in all. It's interesting, that Greek word for workings is only used one other time in the entire Bible in verse 10, and it's the working of miracles. So we know that there are workings of miracles that are done by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to give them an example. And Yes. For example, um, an evangelist comes to your church, and the Lord gives that evangelist a word of knowledge that the Lord wants to heal somebody at their back is hurting. Yeah. So then that person, they call out, somebody has their back hurts, that person comes, and then it's working on miracles because then that person gets healed so it's two miracles and we've seen people that all of a sudden they just feel this fire or something in their body and all of a sudden their back is healed we kind of consider those miracles because as we're going to see in a moment healings can be more gradual but miracles are as jesus did them each one was instantaneous so we have that same expectation folks because this word is going to tell us all those can be done through each one of us. All right? All right. So this is awesome. So the manifestation of the Spirit, verse 7, is given to each one for the profit of all. So this is not a selfish thing that I can be Mr. Powerful. This is to be able to bless each other and, and, 
as needed in the body of Christ. So it's for the profit of all. So verse 8, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. You know, this is the first of what are called the nine gifts of the Spirit or manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Um, and there, there's a, um, a great word when I went up and looked in the Bible dictionary of what the definition of the Greek word for manifestation is. And it says coming to light. In other words, it wasn't seen and now it's seen. So people are going to know these gifts are being released as Christ released them. And, the, and in Acts, all the believers released them. There was, I'm telling you, the body of Christ many times went quite wild in Acts and with Jesus. And I'm talking about, and then the word spread through the entire region. Now you can see revival breaking out. Because the Lord uses those for people to come to the light and to the knowledge of the gospel of Jesus. Yeah, so this is where we're, we're going to actually, I'm going to actually continue with the nine gifts next time. So I want to actually just get you essentially hooked in with the fact that these gifts have to accompany the gospel. Listen to Mark 16, 20. And they went out, after talking about the Great Commission, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word, the gospel, through the accompanying miracle signs and wonders. So the gifts are meant to be released as we proclaim the gospel. Let me show you that very clearly by Paul in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4. And he says this more than once, by the way. 1 Corinthians 2, 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. Listen to what Paul says. And I want to read verse 3 so you understand the context of this. Paul says, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. He didn't even, like Moses, he didn't even consider himself a good speaker. He trembled. He wasn't a good speaker. But now listen to this. But my preaching was in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Why? That your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but your faith is in the power of God. Amen. Perhaps that's why so many today confess Jesus Christ and then fall away. Perhaps we need to press in more and make sure that as we preach the gospel that it is demonstrated with power. Why? Because that's what I believe are the believers like in Acts when the 3,000 believe. I don't believe they were all sealed with the Holy Spirit. I don't believe one of them was lost. I believe their conversion was complete. You'll see it all throughout the book of Acts. This is really important. That we understand the gospel is to be proclaimed and it is to be proclaimed in power by the manifestation of God's power. What does the Lord say? Not by might, not by power, power but, but by, by my spirit. spirit. And so the spirit is the one who releases these gifts. Marisol, the woman at the well, what did Jesus do? What gift did he release that resulted in her salvation in most of the village? Word of knowledge. She told her that she had had five husbands and that, and that she was living with a man, but that he wasn't her husband. And so that word of knowledge, which is one of the nine gifts, led her to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And then she told the rest of the villagers, this man knew everything about me. me. You know, which is beautiful. In other words, the word of knowledge is the catalyst. And then the word says, then those villagers all believed in Jesus. I, I hope you're getting this. There is incredible beauty in the gospel being proclaimed and confirmed with miracles, signs, and wonders, the power of God, the nine gifts. And these are really important, not only for the building up of the church, but for the effective gospel saving people. The word tells us this. So, 
If I know that, and you know that, and we're all to co carry the Great Commission, right, Marisol? Mm -hmm. As we go out in the world, we're to proclaim the gospel. If we all know that, then guess what? We all need to operate in the gifts. I want to give an example. When I was in the mission field um, in Argentina, one day the gospel was preached, and then afterwards a blind man was healed. Hallelujah. Oh, my Amen. goodness, Dexter. Wow. It was amazing. The word spread, and the next day there was more people. Yeah, it's amazing. Because the power was demonstrated that God was real. Yeah, how many people would you estimate were there the next day without exaggerating? 1,000, uh, 500, 200? Well, the first night there was maybe um, like 20,000 people there. Wow. And then the next night there was... I would say maybe 27. Now this is Carlos Anacondia, which Marisol managed the deliverance tent during that ministry while she was down there in South America. And you can read the history of him. These are not false numbers. And, and part of this was everything was manifested with miracle signs, signs. and wonders. It was powerful, Dexter. And that word spread like crazy. Shh, like I mean, fire. you're talking about true revival reaching South America, many of the countries. It's beautiful. I'm telling you, the effective gospel must have the power of God manifested with it. The scriptures tell us that the Lord will do us, so, so we need to pursue it. So I want to pray. Boy, the Lord says, my word will be proclaimed, and now at this time, my people will walk in the power of the resurrection like never before. He just told me that. Amen. I just want to read the last verse, so I want to make sure you understand this is for all of us. Verse 11, then we'll pray. It says, one in the same Holy Spirit works all these gifts, all these things, which is the miracles, the nine gifts, the everything. He works all these things that he just talked about, distributing to each one of us individually as he wills. So again, brothers and sisters, take the weight off of yourself. If you're bold and you proclaim the gospel, I will tell you, these gifts flow. They do. They flow through you. And with joy, the Holy Spirit flows these gifts through you because you're proclaiming the gospel. Yes, you're saying that. Fill with the Holy Ghost. The problem is, even as Peter, would Peter have walked in the water if he hadn't stepped out of the boat in boldness, Marisol? No. In the same way, unless we step out in boldness to proclaim the gospel, which is Acts chapter 4, the prayer for boldness, folks. Pray it over yourself. It will shake your life because you'll need it to be an effective minister. So the Holy Spirit will look for who will go. That's why the Lord says in Isaiah 6, who will go for us? And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. This is the word, the word says in Chronicles, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro across the earth, searching for one who will be strong for him, who will go. Huh. So I pray, Lord, that we will have boldness that will shake the nations, shake our neighborhoods, yes. shake our church. We surrender completely to be your ministers, ambassadors for Christ on this earth, Lord. We ask in accordance with Luke 11 again that you fill us with the Holy Spirit and now Holy Spirit take over. Not only sanctify us, but lead us into ministry and divine appointments all throughout the week, wherever we go, Father. Amen. Just surprise us. But I ask that you always lead us and give us boldness, Father, in the name of Jesus. We surrender our lives to bear incredible fruit for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This has been your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Feltzer, and my beloved sweet husband, Reverend Dexel Feltzer. We'll see you next week. Amen. Blessings.